Welcome to Archaeotech Assimilation, where we discover and investigate the technology of the Imperium and the tools of chaos. Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of Archaeotech Assimilation. My name is John and as is becoming very regular, I'm just joined by Glenn. How are you doing, mate? Hello, I'm good. And yourself? I'm very good, thank you very much. Um, so, new series to review today, um, as people can see by the title. Um, the new, very uh, black and white crime style of Interrogator. What did you think, mate, without going too much into it? Um, early days, but I think it's got potential. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Uh, how many times have you just watched it once, or did you go for it a couple of times? Uh, just once, because I think, like yourself, I kind of forgot that it was hard. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, it's just at the time to watch it the once. I mean, it's not it's the same as all the rest of them. It's not long, so I could have watched it a couple of times. But I think I'll probably do what we talked about with uh, Angels of Death once we get either all of it or at least sort of half of it. I'll watch it all in one mm. sitting to make it more of like a, a feature length thing. Yeah, no, well, that's it, isn't it? Because, I mean, we're a week late with this because um, I, I put it in the group like I normally do and then I completely forgot about it, which is unlike us. Um, so I've watched it. I watched it three times today. I watched it once when I texted you and said, shit, we forgot about this. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I watched it when I was taking notes and then I just watched it again just before. It's actually pretty good. Um, like you say, it's early days. It's only about once you take out the credits about 10 and a half minutes worth of show. yeah but yeah it was it was good i thought it was good it's got like you say potential so should we should we dive straight into it and then we can mm -hmm. uh, uh then we can give our thoughts at the end so uh, the first episode is called always more blood um i think this sets up somewhere we haven't visited yet in the animations into like a, a big hive city uh in the dark underbelly and uh, as always on these episodes, we're going to talk about the episode and cover things that we liked and didn't like. So take this as your spoiler warning uh, as we dive in. So uh, the opening scene, we see two figures fighting in the shadows, cut to black, followed by a dramatic gunshot. Uh, what we see then is uh, someone rattling through the pockets of a dead man, taking a bottle of pills from his pocket. Uh, our protagonist, who we find out is called Jürgen, uh, and then cuts to the shower, which is what you see on the episode cover. Uh, and he's sort of telling us that survival is about doing what's necessary. And he wonders if his hands will ever be clean again. Uh, we then get a flashback, which shows him down in a tunnel system where he comes across three children cowering down in a corner. Their faces sort of turn demonic and he shoots them all. Uh, and then it cuts to him standing over a pile of burning corpses. Uh, he tries to snap himself out of it and headbutts the shower wall. Um, before it, another flashback shows a woman falling to her fiery death as he is unable to reach her. And he screams out, no, which is very dramatic. <laughs> um, so he's obviously clearly seen some shit and he's haunted by his past and he crushes some pills into his drink uh, and takes them and blacks out. So um, obviously this guy had quite a, a, a cheerful job. And he's suffering for it now, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, obviously, man with a, a deep, dark past. So I'm looking forward to them expanding maybe a little bit more on that as well. Mm. Plus, I'm going to shut, have a shout at this. I'm going to guess woman in fiery death, not dead. Yeah. She might be a bit mutilated, but she's not going to be dead. Yeah, she's not going to be dead. It's going to be a classic. Oh, I thought you were dead. Oh, no, my life's changed. It was me all along. Yeah, yeah, yeah somewhere like along that. that. Yeah. Well, um, we'll see. But uh, for now, he gets woken up um, by a really irritating loud vox that's just saying, you are requested to respond over and over again. Uh, and you sort of see what sort of a mess his life is because he, he gets up um, and goes over to the intercom to answer it, but his microphone's not plugged in. So then it sort of cuts to him rattling around until he eventually finds it. Um, but we just need to pause very briefly and I look at his intercom 
and I know this is 40k and it's grimdark, but when they somebody along the lines in the last 40,000 years decided to design and make this thing, like not from uh, the game or our perspective, but in this universe, someone decided, do you know what? We need to put skulls on everything. And I saw, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's just mental. <laughs> I was like, whenever I, whenever I saw that, I know it's early in this, but it's very, it's proper 40K. Yeah setting and like imagery and everything they've they've nailed that quite well i think i know they've nailed it but what i need to know is like where in our timeline did this become the when, when did it become trendy that we need to put skulls and everything we've got skulls flying around with babies glued to them well you know in the grim darkness if there's only war there's a lot of dead people floating around so they just think ah, oh, we'll, we'll <laughs> repurpose that bit of dead body into um yeah literally everything fair enough and then uh wh whatever we can't use to for decorations they'll grind up into uh protein bars probably yeah probably something like that okay well tangent aside um he wakes up jürgen wakes up with a, a very horrible hangover and it answers the um the tunnel to someone called eloy who tells him that there's people looking for him uh Jürgen assumes it's looters, but Eloy tells him that actually they're looking for him and they've got a serious grudge. Um, and for whatever reason, he can't tell a lie. So unfortunately, he's told him where to find Jürgen. Um, he turns and looks at his door, realises that he's forgot to lock it. Uh, and it's kicked open by a massive thug who comes in and punches him square in the face and tells him to sit down. Uh, and as he does, these two more, I think they're called hitters, uh, enter. And he sort of think, monologues all the way through this in his head and he assumes that there's two more outside. Um, so he knows that he can't escape easily. He offers them a drink of Amasek, but no one responds. So he takes two glasses out of his drawer, one of which is cracked and uh, splintered quite badly. And we see that he's got a, pit, a pistol hidden in his desk. Um, he pours his drink, but he spills some due to his hangover. Uh, and then this woman sits down opposite him and she's there on behalf of someone called Ado to collect what is owed, um, clearly for drugs that he's bought. But instead of cash, Ado wants him to do a job. Um, he says he's not going to do it and he wants to pay, but she says that um, he has a skill that require, that's required for the job um, and they need an interrogator. Um, and he narrates to us that that man died with Bellinor, uh, assuming it's the woman who may or may not have fallen to her death. Uh, the hitter then tells him the job, but he doesn't hear any of it because he's having more flashbacks and he says that he's not going to do it. Suddenly he reaches across the desk and rams the broken glass into her throat and drops her to the floor, uh, which is pretty cool. <laughs> he yep. grabs his gun uh, and goes to shoot the guy who punched him, but it clicks uselessly. So he ducks behind his desk um, and the two guards, or well, one of the guards walks around towards him. Uh, he opens his revolver and sees that he's only loaded three bullets and he's not even loaded them in any order. Uh, the big guy walks around and Jürgen quickly shoots him in the head. Um, he jumps over the desk um, and shoots the other thug in the stomach. As he gra grabs the woman up off the floor, the other two hitters from outside walk in and he holds her up as a shield. Uh, one of them offers to take her and leave, but Jürgen shoots him instead uh, and then has a standoff with the last one. Um, but his confidence fades away as uh, the woman dies and sort of falls to the floor. So it's just him and the last hitter standing off. Um, and Jürgen obviously knows he's got to play his cards right here. So he, sa he says, well, why don't we both just uh, back away? Neither of us need to die like the others uh, and we'll let death take us somewhere else. Um, and the hitter sort of weighs up his options, knowing that Jürgen's probably out of bullets or his gun's not going to work, but he doesn't fancy his chances, so he leaves, but tells that Jürgen that this isn't over. Uh, and as a reward, Jürgen gets blackout drunk and passes out, but this time he's woken up again by banging on the door. And this time the door opens on its own um, and an old acquaintance called Balder comes in, uh, gets Jürgen up onto his feet, punches him in the stomach, um, which uh, Jürgen admits in his head that he probably deserved. Uh, and this guy is having a go at him for wallowing in misery for too long. So Jürgen finally says to him, what do you want? And he says, well, I have a lead. 
regarding Bellona. And the episode ends. So, um, pretty good, I thought. Yep. Intriguing. I mean, like, whenever they described it as a, a dark noir comic, I think they nailed it. It's, whilst it is black and white, it's quite, it's going to be quite bloody. Yeah. It's, it's a bit sweary. It's a bit, you know, there's, and there's proper swearing in it. It's not like made up Games Workshop swearing that you get in some of the novels. It's, yeah. you know, I think it's going to be quite violent. And, yeah. uh, yeah, I want to see where where it all leads into because whenever I first seen the the title, um, I have, I have a thing about inquisitors, and an interrogator is part of an inquisitor's retinue. Yeah. So I want to see if it if it delves into like, you know, I'm not saying we're going to get something like an Eisenhorn or a Ravener or anything like that, but you know, a little bit more about like a low level. Sort of street level inquisitor maybe yeah it's just you yeah. know sort of a bit of the political intrigue a bit of the cloak and dagger stuff mm. that you get in some of the novels so hopefully this leads into that or maybe it's just going to be a story focused entirely around him and you know equally it's something really different to what we've got before either from novels or uh, animation so just different stories and different perspectives on stuff is always good yeah. to have, I think. Yeah. I, it, it, like you say, again, we said it's got potential to go, because we're going to go out into this hive now and see what's mm. about. Um, so, yeah, we're probably going to bump into people from his past, good and bad, and probably like, it will flash back probably to show things that he's done. And, and maybe we will see that Inquisitor and, if they were working on clearing out, uh, I don't know, some heretics from this planet, uh, obviously those kids were quite demonic, so he obviously had something to do with that. Um, so it will be, it will, I reckon, hopefully we will see something like that, because obviously they always have a, a bit of a crew, and this is clearly where this uh, big guy's from, and the woman as well, so, yeah. It, it, yeah, to be fair, the woman that fell off the the gantry was yeah. quite quite ornately dressed, so she yeah. may even have been the inquisitor herself oh maybe uh and maybe that's why he's now mm -hmm. just a a washed up <laughs> interrogator or ex-interrogator mm -hmm. uh because if the inquisitor dies ten the retinue goes their own separate way so yeah. possibly i don't know i don't know where the story's going to go but yeah. it's uh interesting to see yeah and it's good i like, we it's gonna. I'm. I'm looking forward to expanding because a lot of these shows are, are very um, set on on the story. Like um, as good as Angel of Death were, it was like the one sort of mission. And hopefully, this is going to send us maybe throughout different parts of the hive, and, and, and we get to really explore what it's really like. Because we know what a battle looks like. We know what it's like to just have these big wars going on. But this is going to be hopefully. I can't remember the game that came out not too long ago. Where it's like the first person shooter, but uh, uh, the Necromonda game. Yeah, so maybe yeah. it's going to be like Hired God. Yeah, that's the one. In a, in a vein like that, where it's just going to be ground level. He's got to survive on his own skills, obviously with a couple of friends, and just really see what sort of. St I don't think he's going to be all in one piece by the end of this. Yeah, it's it's the human level of forty k. Yeah. It's it's not the border porn like you say, and <laughs> like just all the explosions and crap. It's yeah. all the the day to day, mon slightly more mundane side of what happens in the grim darkness of it's like the shitty uh, shitty hive worlds. Yeah, the sort of place that me or you would end up living if if we were in forty k. Yeah, no, I'd be one of those little floating skulls by now. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I'd we'd be, be long dead. Yeah, I'd be a server cleaning toilets probably. Yeah. But um, yeah, uh, a good, a good, a good first episode, and it definitely makes me want to see more. And hopefully, we'll get quite a few episodes. I think it'll be good. Really flesh the story out. What did you think of the actual visuals, the animation side of it? I mean, I like it. it like me, I think me and you, they could probably um, just show us stick figures, and we'll say that we liked it for its arty style and yeah. its direction. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I liked it. It's 
it's a good style. When, when at first, when the, obviously when the episode starts and you have the very um, basic sort of, you know, where he's falling into the glass, yeah. just the intro, uh, for a couple of seconds, I was like, I hope this isn't it because that's going to be really hard to follow. But no, I like it. It's, it's just black and white. It's, it's good quality. It's not the um, sort of, uh, it's, 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 it's a better, better quality of animation than the Hammer and Bolter, not so comic booky, but it's, yeah. it works. I, and I, no, I really liked it. Um, yeah. Yeah. I must admit, I was a little bit anxious about the, oh, am I going to enjoy a black and white? But I must say, the animation quality is, is really good. I actually prefer this over like the black and white of um, Into the Death. Yeah, yeah. Every, everything's just a bit clearer and crisper yeah i think i don't know whether it's the fact that they haven't just added in that extra random spot color or mm. what it is but yeah i'll be interested to see what the other guys think of it because they're notoriously harder to please yeah. when it comes to visuals than us i, I uh, can tell you the answers shane, shane will like it yeah. tom won't watch it and dave will hate it yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> and that's it. And that seems to be the thing. <laughs> I just don't think those two are fans of animation in general. No. No. I and think, and I, this is the thing. If you're not into animation, <coughs> generally, it's going to be hard. Because it's like, oh, I like um, things like... People won't like South Park because of the animation of it. Even though, I've, obviously, sense of humour aside, if you think it's funny, but some people can't get past the fact that it's a cartoon... So it's the same with this sort of stuff. If you don't like cartoons, you don't like cartoons. Yeah, I mean, like the animation South Park doesn't bother me. I just think it's a shit program. Well, um, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I know you. I know you're getting that. Like, like people watch that Robot Chicken for God's sake. It's yeah. you know, it, it's to their own when it comes to the visuals. But I'm getting this for the story. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it's the story is the main thing. Same with the computer game. If there's a really good story and good gameplay, if the anime, uh, if the visuals aren't up to scratch, mm, that's a secondary concern, really. So hopefully, uh, it'll be good enough that you know people who aren't necessarily a fan of the animation, the story will be good enough. Yeah. Well, hopefully this won't let us down. I think it's. I, th I don't feel like it will. I think it's got the intrigue. I think it's going to be good. Um, just don't hold our breaths. Um, I, I just hope we get more than three goddamn episodes of yeah, 10 minutes apiece. Yeah, yeah. I can handle 10 minutes apiece if we get a full season, but the Exodite was a little bit... Of, we need to... I, I like the Exodite, but we need to wash the taste of only, only having three short episodes out of our mouths and, and get a, yeah, another I mean, decent, decent chunk from this. We need sort of, as a minimum, sort of six... 10 minute episodes. Yeah, I can take So you that. can sit down and you've got an hour's worth. Yeah. I, you know, yeah. Or, and hopefully released on a regular basis. Yeah. I mean, we're a week behind, which worried me until today, the regular Wednesday, um, and there was no second episode. So Yeah. No, nah, I seen them I seen them put up the post of ah, episode two is coming next week. And like next week. Oh, <laughs> right to see. I know. So yeah. You don't yeah. win yourselves any fans and don't do yourself any favours when you release it fortnightly. But, hey, at least we're going to get it. You know what? I would, I will take fortnightly if they stick to it. If they stick to an actual schedule, yeah, that's, that's fine. And we get animation one week, all the other crap the next week, animation yeah. next. You know, I, yeah, yeah. If, there's a, if there's a defined schedule, that's fine. I'll get used to it. I might not necessarily like the fact that we're only getting 10 or 15 minutes of animation every two weeks, but at least I know that's what it'll be. Yeah. Well, I think we've uh, grumbled about schedules in every episode, so we yeah, yeah, better yeah, move yeah. on. And uh, yeah. we'll, we'll wrap up. Let us know what you thought of um, the animation. Let us know what you thought of our review, please. Uh, and uh, as always, check us out on Instagram. Um, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, obviously, because you're here. Uh, we do have a podcast. Go to any podcast service and put Iron Ceramite Animal pop up. Um, the Twitch and Patreon, 
but I, I mean, we should really cut them out until we start doing stuff with them a bit more often. <laughs> yeah. But follow us, and eventually something will appear. Uh, Element Games, go do your shopping there, help the channel out, um, and hopefully we can do another giveaway like the one that happened uh, through April and we announced our winner on the 1st of May, which is in a couple of days from now. Uh, and our combat cards, where Glenn and Shane will humiliate you with uh, the amount of hours they put into it. <laughs> yeah. <That's>, uh, <laughs> no comment. So oh, that's it for God. this week. Um, yeah. Thank you very much for joining us and we'll see you on the next video. Bye. As always, we would like to thank you for listening to our Iron and Ceramite podcast. If you liked us, then you can also find us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and any other good podcast services. Just remember, in the grim darkness of the far future, there is only war.